Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about fitting an extractor fan to your enclosure. I'm using a Tukari TS plexiglass case. You could easily use a lac case, one of the common lac cases, or uh, if you've got an enclosure that is made of wood or metal, you could fit it to that as well. The extractor is there. The carbon and HEPA filters are on the outside of the case. The fan, which is a 120mm fan, is on the inside. You could swap those around if you wanted, I guess, but I've got the fan on the inside because it reduces noise. Obviously the fan can be noisy, so having it inside the enclosure reduces the noise in the actual room. So to begin with, I'm going to take the fan off of here and we can see exactly how I've done the hole. Here is the hole that I've cut in the plexiglass, as you can see here. Uh, the eagle eyed might notice there's a little bit of a, a cut out there. There was originally a 60mm fan hole here and I've used part of that while making the main hole. And there are eight individual holes for the bolts that go through. The important thing if you are cutting plexiglass or perspex is to use a very fine bladed saw blade. Without that then it will be a problem. So make sure that you use a fine bladed saw and it's like cutting butter. Very very easy to do. Right this is the structure of the extractor fan laid out here. To begin with we have a grill just a uh, to cover the front. This is made out of PUTG. You could do the main housing out of PLA if you wanted to, depending on the, the temperatures you're going to be using in your enclosure. But the front and rear grills must be PUTG because they need to be flexible when they slot in. They actually slot into holes top and bottom of the fan housing and they just flex to go in. There we have it. These are the filters. Carbon filter, HEPA filter. They've got little tags on the front of them to show that they go in that particular direction. And this is the housing that will be on the outside of your enclosure. It's got a little rim there to stop the filters going too far back. They just simply slot in these are Zortrax filters, they're a standard filter, so you can get them very, very easily. Just one after the other. They're not going to fall out, they're a snug fit. Okay, let me just pop those out again. And you can see here there is a seal, an EDPM seal. You, you can either make a TPU seal yourself, or you can buy this. This is 2.6 millimeter EDPM and I'll leave a link in the description. And the information is actually on uh, Thingiverse for this particular item. So you will have all the information on Thingiverse as well. So it just goes into a slot there. I'm just pressing it in. Uh, there are square nuts that go into all of the bolt holes and you've got the bolt holes there. Okay, so we have the filter housing, HEPA filter, carbon filter, and we will have, whoops, the cover there. Right, now we're going on to the fan housing. So this is situated inside of the enclosure. Again, another seal so that no air that's been pushed from inside the enclosure is going to escape outside. And we have four holes, fixing holes for the fan, 120 millimeter fan. As you can see, the bolts bolt from the inside, so you've got a nice clean face on the outside of the item. Here, you can see the fan hole there. Again, there is another seal inside here, which seals the edge of the fan against the housing, so that nowhere that the fan is blowing out comes back in through 
for housing. So uh, you can see the cable here. There is a slot for the cable, which hopefully you might be able to see here. So the fan lead will actually just pop through and it will go in like that. So we'll have, have the fan in. You have to ensure that it's put the, the correct way around as well because the fan is pushing air out. So that is that section. This again is a finger guard to, to cover the fan. Same principle, this needs to be in PETG so that it can flex and lock in. And finally, I didn't think I would have to do this, but when the fan is blowing against the HEPA filter, which is like a paper filter, you do get some blowback because not all the air is going to go through. That paper filter is quite solid. So there is some turbulence that comes back through. And I found there was a little bit of air coming ar around the inside of the cabinet. So I've printed this little buffer, I suppose you could say, which will go about two centimetres away from the fan and it stops any turbulent air coming out. It still allow allows the fan to suck air through. So let's put all these together and see what they look like. This shows the two parts completed together. So the grill is in, the filters are in, the seal is all there. So the front part of the housing is ready. You can see the little tag for the carbon filter. So that's one half. The second half now, the fan. And in this particular case, we're using a Noctua Industrial, an IPPC 3000 12 volt fan. You need a fan that has a high pressure, can produce a high pressure, not a, a standard case fan, a PC case fan. You need a strong one. Uh, there is additionally another one, because the Noctua is a little bit expensive. There is uh, one that's probably about a third of the price. Uh, and I will leave uh, a quote in the description for the name of that. I am using that on, a, on another uh, extractor fan and that works quite well but the Noctua is quieter and is stronger and I happen to have the Noctua actually connected to um, a Noctua speed controller uh, so I can vary the fan rate on this particular one but you don't necessarily have to have that you could just use the fan on or off I, I just like the ability to be able to turn it down if I need to uh, that, that regulates the, the cooling to a certain extent. It's also connected to a thermostat as well, which I will cover in another programme. OK, and this not fixed in, but you can see how the, the, the buffer actually works there. So you have that amount of gap allowing the fan to suck air in, but no air can push back. At least if, if it does come back, it'll come out the sides, not directly onto a print. Right, let's get this back into the housing. I'm just going to turn the fan on briefly so you can hear what it sounds like. And with the speed controller for the Noctua, I can vary the speed. Some people have asked how the fan is powered. Now it's a 12 volt fan. Uh, what I have here is just a 12 volt power supply. So a power brick which terminates in a, a 12 volt, standard 12 volt connection. Uh, I'm using it through uh, a box that I've created, but you can equally uh, either uh, potentially just chop, chop that and use a positive and negative and join it up to the fan lead a little bit of soldering is required uh, in my case i've got a, a socket the 12 volt socket that, that i can plug in there and inside 
there are the connections and this is the fan lead here with the positive and negative so it is relatively easy to do so as long as you know what you're doing and the power is off you can cut the connection on the 12 volt or use a socket and then attach it to the positive and negative leads of the fan or this is on the Noctua if you use the cheaper fan that I have uh, mentioned below then that only has a positive and negative uh, lead anyway come trailing from it so it makes it even easier the Noctua actually has four cables So I hope this video was informative about how to add a extractor fan with filters to your enclosure, be it the Tukari or the lac enclosure where you've got a solid piece of perspex, or if it's a wood enclosure where you just need to separate the two halves a bit further, use some longer bolts to join the two sections together, or even if it's uh, for a metal enclosure or a server cabinet where the perhaps the, the vent is already uh, pre-drilled and this will fit. All the details are on Thingiverse, uh, the link is below uh, and if you like this video and perhaps some other videos where I'll be covering uh, adding a thermostatic control then please subscribe to this channel and I'll be able to make more. Thank you very much.